Hi, this is Dr. O'Connor. Welcome to Pathways to Chemistry. In this short video, I'm going to talk about phosphoric acid derivatives, and then I'm going to talk about phosphorylation. Now, you can think of phosphoric acid as being very close in resemblance to that of a carboxylic acid. So let's take a look at what we have. Here we have a carboxylic acid. Here we have phosphoric acid. And this part right here, with the exception of the P, think of a carbon replacing the P, would be the carboxylic group, okay? Or a carboxyl group. But anyway, phosphoric acid, it has three ionizable hydrogens. And that's one, two, three. And because of that, when one hydrogen is lost, we end up with dihydrogen phosphate ion. When two hydrogens are lost, we end up with hydrogen phosphate ion. And when three hydrogens are lost, of course, the phosphate ion, which you are familiar with from last semester. So just like a carboxylic acid, phosphoric acid will react with an alcohol in order to form an ester, but not a typical ester. It would be a phosphate, phosphate ester, okay? So it's this part here that resembles the ester. Remember, if we replace the P with a carbon here, then we would have, um, and then if we had a carbon here, that would be an ester group, okay? So we would call this, this is called methyl phosphate, and this is a phosphate monoester, okay? Phosphate monoesters, and there are also phosphate diesters, they are acidic, and that's because they still contain these acidic hydrogens. Remember, the hydrogens bonded to the oxygens. So we find them in body fluids present as ions. So we normally write the phosphate groups in their ionized forms. So for example, for glyceraldehyde monophosphate, which is right here. So here we have glyceraldehyde monophosphate and you'll either see it represented like this or like this. And this part here where you have the phosphorus and the three oxygens, that is called a phosphoryl group. Let's take a look at a particular type of compound we did not look at in previous modules. And those are called acid anhydrides. And an acid anhydride forms when two carboxylic acids join together, eliminating a molecule of water. So we're not going to discuss acidic anhydrides but because they're not really important in biochemistry. But the anhydrides of phosphoric acid are important in biochemistry. So if we have two molecules of phosphoric acid combine, of course, with a loss of water, they'll form what we call a phosphoric acid anhydride. What can happen is this molecule here can react with another phosphoric acid molecule and produce this triphosphoric acid. So it turns out that these anhydride containing acids can also form esters. And we call these esters diphosphate and triphosphate esters as shown here. Diphosphate, here we have these two phosphorus groups, and the tri, we have one, two, three of these groups. You can see why they're called phosphate esters. Replace the, the P 
with the uh, with a carbon and you can see here you've got phosphorus and double bond to an oxygen single bond to an oxygen then you have this um, ester linkage here okay so we'll be referring to these a lot a little bit later in the course now here's something that I want you to take a look at it turns out that when we transfer a phosphoryl group from one molecule to another this is called phosphorylation so phosphorylation okay so the transfer of a phosphoryl group from one molecule to another is called phosphorylation so here we have a compound called adenosine triphosphate. In fact, let me show you what that looks like down here. This is adenosine, this whole thing is adenosine triphosphate. So we have this, uh, we have this ring here and we have these um, rings that contain nitrogen. And then triphosphate, so there's one, two, three, of these phosphate groups if you will all right and let's go back up here um, adenosine triphosphate is also known as ATP and we've already discussed that okay that's our energy molecule if you will what actually produces the energy is the hydrolysis okay when one of these phosphoryl groups is removed so the bond is broken in hydrolysis when this bond is broken, then we end up with ADP, which would be adenosine diphosphate. Again, it's the transfer of a phosphoryl group, okay? So let's take a look at this. In many biochemical reactions, as you know, phosphoryl groups are provided, again, by ATP when a phosphoryl group is removed from ATP, then the reaction is accompanied by an energy release. This addition and removal of the phosphoryl groups is a mechanism that regulates the activity of many of these biomolecules. In summary, what I want you to get from this is that we have organic phosphates that have one or two R groups. We refer to them as monoesters or diesters, and these are acids, and they exist in ionized form in body fluids. Diphosphate and triphosphate groups are important in biomolecules, and they can contain one or two of these anhydride linkages. And then phosphorylation is the transfer of a phosphoryl group from one molecule to another. Remember, the phosphoryl group is this group here. Of course, when we talk about energy and metabolism, what we're concerned with is the transfer of the phosphoryl group from adenosine triphosphate to another molecule. So here we have ATP and being converted to ADP, adenosine diphosphate. And this is with a release of energy. Now remember, the reverse, when we have ADP being converted to ATP, this involves the transfer of a phosphoryl group from some molecule to the ADP which results in the formation of ATP okay and that as we know requires some energy well that's the end of this video if you have any questions as usual please contact me otherwise have a great day